Now we can return to our story. Alice and Bob have split and must communicate from a distance in order to arrange their next steps. However, Eve is able to intercept their letters, so they need to disguise their meaning. The following analogy is helpful. First, Alice locks her message in a box with a lock that only her and Bob have the combination to. This is known as encryption. Then she sends the box to Bob knowing that it is safe since nobody else knows the combination. When Bob receives the box, he unlocks it and reads the message. This is known as decryption. Cryptography begins when we perform encryption and decryption with virtual locks instead of physical ones. These are known as ciphers. This first well-known cipher, a substitution cipher, was used by Julius Caesar around 58 BC. It's now referred to as the Caesar cipher. During the war, Caesar shifted each letter in his military commands in order to make them appear meaningless should the enemy intercept it. Imagine Alice and Bob decided in advance to communicate using the Caesar cipher with a shift of three. First, Alice writes her message in plain English. Then she applies a shift of three to each letter. So A becomes D, B becomes E, C becomes F, and so on. This unreadable or encrypted message is then sent to Bob openly. Then Bob simply subtracts the shift of three from each letter in order to read the original message. Incredibly, this basic cipher was used by military leaders for hundreds of years after Caesar. I fought and won, but I haven't conquered over man's spirit, which is indomitable. However, a lock is only as strong as its weakest point. A lockbreaker may look for mechanical flaws, or failing that, extract information in order to narrow down the correct combination. Lockbreaking and codebreaking are very similar. The true weakness of the Caesar cipher was published 800 years later by an Arab mathematician named Al-Kindi. He broke Caesar cipher by using a clue based on an important property of the language a message is written in. If you scan text from any book and count the frequency of each letter, you will find a fairly consistent pattern. For example, these are letter frequencies of English. This can be thought of as the fingerprint of English. We leave this fingerprint when we communicate without realizing it. This clue is one of the most valuable tools for a codebreaker. To break this cipher, they count up the frequencies of each letter in the encrypted text and check how far the fingerprint has shifted. If H is the most popular letter instead of E, then the shift was likely 3. They reversed the shift in order to reveal the message. This was a blow to the Caesar cipher, but it didn't stop people from developing stronger ciphers. A strong cipher is one which disguises a fingerprint. This fingerprint is a result of unique letter frequencies within a language. To make a lighter fingerprint is to flatten this distribution of letter frequencies. By the mid-15th century, we had advanced polyalphabetic ciphers to accomplish this. Imagine Alice and Bob have shared a secret shift word. First, Alice converts the word into numbers according to the letter position in the alphabet. Next, this sequence of numbers is repeated along the message. Finally, each letter in the message is encrypted by shifting according to the number below it. Then the encrypted message is sent openly to Bob. Bob decrypts the message by subtracting the shifts according to the secret word he also has a copy of. Now imagine a code breaker, Eve. She intercepts a series of messages and calculates the letter frequencies. She will find a flatter distribution, a lighter fingerprint. Hmm, how could she break this? Remember, code breakers look for an information leak, the same as finding a partial fingerprint. Anytime there is a differential in letter frequencies, a leak of information occurs. 
This difference is caused by any repetition in the encrypted message. In this case, this cipher suffers from the repetition of the shift word. To break the encryption, Eve would first need to determine the length of the shift word used, not the word itself. When she checks the frequency distribution of every fifth letter, the fingerprint will reveal itself. The problem now is to break five Caesar ciphers in a repeating sequence. Individually, this is a trivial task as we have seen before. So, for over 400 years, the problem remained. How could Alice design a cipher that hides her fingerprint, thus stopping the leak of information? The answer is randomness. Think of this. Alice rolls a 26-sided dice to generate a list of random shifts and shares this with Bob instead of a shift word. Now, to encrypt her message, Alice uses this list of random shifts instead. It is important that this list of shifts be as long as the message as to avoid any repetition. Then she sends it to Bob, who decrypts the message by using the same list of random numbers she had given him. Now Eve will have a problem, because the resulting encrypted message will have two powerful properties. One, the shifts never fall into a repetitive pattern. And two, the encrypted message will have a uniform frequency distribution. Because there is no frequency differential, and therefore no leak, it is now impossible for Eve to break the encryption. This is the strongest possible method of encryption and it emerged towards the end of the 19th century. It is now known as the one-time pad. To understand the true power of this method, consider the following experiment. To visualize the strength of the one-time pad, we must understand the explosion of possibilities. For example, the Caesar cipher shifted every letter by the same amount, which was some number between 1 and 26. If Alice was to encrypt her name, it would result in one of 26 possible encryptions, a small number of possibilities. Now compare this to the one-time pad, where each letter would be shifted by a different number between 1 and 26. The number of possible encryptions is 26 multiplied by itself five times, almost 12 million. This could be hard to visualize. So imagine she wrote her name on a single page, and on top of it stacked every possible encryption. How high would it be? With almost 12 million five-letter sequences, this stack of paper would be enormous. Over one kilometer high. When Alice encrypts her name using the one-time pad, it is the same as picking one of these pages at random. This is perfect secrecy in action. 